Hello guys and welcome to a new video and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything music from death metal to queen and everything in between. Today's Thursday and you know what that means, so welcome to a new DMT or death metal Thursdays with Pat video, albums review edition. On today's video we'll be talking about one of the most legendary death metal albums ever to be released by one of the most legendary death metal bands ever, One Morbid Angel. This album is so iconic and influential that it's ridiculous, I haven't talked about it yet. So yeah, before recording this video, I actually decided to give it a once over and listen to it again so that I could research it a little bit further and be more prepared for this video. And I was so pissed to see that I actually lent it to a friend and that CD is as good as gone because I don't even remember who I lent it to. Now with Morbid Angel, it's really easy to know which CDs you're missing because they pretty much go in alphabetical order. It's not something they actually planned, it's something that just basically happened and they decided to keep it going. So yeah, I actually do have B and C and D. Hell, I even have this guy for God's sake. And if you're familiar with Morbid Angel's discography, then you know I am pissed to have this guy and still be missing the first one. No! Okay, so yeah, without further ado, let's talk about Morbid Angel's debut album, Alters of Madness. Alters of Madness was released on May 12, 1989. It is 38 minutes and 53 seconds of pure mayhem. Just plain awesome, raw, aggressive, old school death metal. The now very iconic album cover was done by Dan Seagrave. It features 10 tracks or 9 tracks depending upon what release you have. It was recorded at Mori Sound Recordings at Tampa, Florida and it was released by both Combat and Eurek. On this particular album, Mori Angel was still a four piece. You had the three guys from the classic lineup, David Vincent on bass and vocals, Trey Sadgat on guitar and of course Pete Sandoval on drums. But you also had Richard Brunel, rest in peace, on guitar. A really cool lineup that I wish had lasted a little bit longer. Now let's talk about the production and the sound quality on this album a little bit. And even though they already had some experience at the studio recording a couple of songs that they then released as Abominations of Desolation later on, this is officially Morbid Angel's debut album and it shows. It really does sound dark and evil and awesome. I mean, there's some things with the mix I would have done differently. I would have definitely liked the guitars to be a little bit louder in the mix. And of course, even back then, you could definitely tell that you had a great asset in Pete Sandoval's drumming. So that was featured prominently in that mix. I mean, don't get me wrong. Pete's drumming is amazing on this album and pretty much his whole career, really. But I would have lowered it in the mix a little bit. It almost sounds like the drums are the main instrument in the band. And we also get David Vincent's best vocal performance ever, in my opinion, anyway. We get that very evil, raspy sounding growl that's pretty, pretty awesome that he had never been able to replicate on the other albums. And funny enough, he actually said on an interview that he was fighting off a cold while recording this album and that gave him that very distinctive raspiness to that voice that sounds pretty fucking sick. I love it. I also appreciate the fact that you can actually decipher what he's saying a lot better than on the later albums. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a brutal, very deep growl, but you know, the deeper it is, the lower it is, the harder it is to understand. So yeah, I really appreciate the vocals on this album. Now, one of the really cool things about this album and Morbid Angel is the fact that they distance themselves a lot from thrash metal. Like a lot of the old school death metal bands, especially in the late 80s, they were still very, very thrashy. They had a lot of thrash elements. They even looked like thrash metal bands, you know, with the ripped up jeans, the white sneakers. Some of them would even wear sweatpants on stage, which is ridiculous to me. But Morbid Angel actually worked on their aesthetic to match the music and the sound and the darkness and the aggression of the music, which I think is pretty awesome. They definitely took it up a notch as far as the visuals and the aesthetic goes. You know, the logo, the pentagram, the onstage presence, they definitely beefed it up and they took the whole genre to a new level. And that also influenced a lot of the black metal that was soon to be born. I mean, honestly, Morbid Angel is not a band that you can just get into right away. It's definitely one of the bands that you have to listen to more than once so that it grows on you. But once it does, man, oh man. You know, it's not a band as easy to get into as, you know, Cannibal Corpse or Obituary or even Death. You know, there's a lot more going on, especially back then, you know, in the late 80s. Death Metal was still maturing and this album raised the bar for every band out there. Like, we can probably argue about the birth of Death Metal, but this is definitely when Death Metal came of age. Okay, so let's get into the music. The opening track for this album is called Immortal Rights, and it starts out with a backwards intro that blends into the forwards intro at the head of the snare. Really cool stuff. I really enjoy that haunting melody on the second and third verse and that bridge towards the end. That's really, really cool. 
now immortal. Song number two is Suffocation with a great catchy ass chorus. It's ridiculously awesome. You also get a lot of tempo changes here which I really appreciate and I really dig that break with a little bass hook right before the line. It's the dawn of the crucifiers. Suffocation. Great stuff. On this song you get a lot of Slayer type solos and even one with a harmonizer at the very end which is really really cool. Very evil sounding. Song number three is Visions from the Black Side and it's awesome it's got a very black metal intro which you know it was before even black metal was a thing and it's something you would definitely expect to hear out of a dark funeral album it's really cool i love this song a lot of fast blast beats and it's got some crazy tremolo picking part towards the end of the song cool stuff song number four is mace of torment a fan favorite for sure it's got some very groovy breakdowns and a very fun to sing along chorus mace of torment mace of torment mace of torment Mace of Death. This is one of the slower, thrashier songs on the album, but really cool nonetheless. Now track number five is Lord of All Fevers and Plague, and this is the song that varies. You know how in the beginning of the video I mentioned that you might have nine or ten songs depending upon the release of the album? Well, this song was actually featured on the original CD release, but it was not featured on the original vinyl or cassette releases for some odd reason. It is one of the simpler songs on the album for sure, but it's pretty cool and it's got one of the most catchiest choruses on the entire album. So yeah, I don't really know why they decided to discard this song and not a different song. So yeah, song number five, sometimes you can find it on the original release, sometimes you can't. Now at this point, we flip the album over and we get to song number six, Chapel of Ghouls. A very, very Slayer song. I mean, it really reminds me of Hunting the Chapel lyrically. You know, it's about a church being attacked by, in this case, ghouls. This is definitely a fan favorite. I mean, I love the song. It's got really fast blast beats, some sick ass solos, and even keyboards. Yeah keyboards and yeah i know what you're saying bad really keys on a death metal song but yeah this is not cheesy keyboards it's really cool they really add up to the ambience of the song especially during the solos they really add up to that dark atmosphere of the song really cool stuff a very very slayer song song number seven is called bleed for the devil it's raw it's fast it's aggressive but pretty much forgettable it's definitely not a standout song if it were up to me, I would have discarded of this song as opposed to Lord of All Fevers and Play. Now, song number eight is called Damnation, and it's one of my favorite songs by Morbid Angel. It sounds dark and evil, it's got great lyrics, awesome vocal performance, great drumming, the solos, the riffing, it's just amazing. I love this song. I might be a little bit biased. It's not really a fan favorite, but it was one of the songs that got me into the genre. Now, track number nine is called Blasphemy, and it's got a really catchy chorus, Blaspheme the Ghost, Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Another raw and aggressive track. And just as it ends and you think the album is over, here comes track number 10. The last song on this relentless album, Evil Spell. And Satan loves the taste of fear. Another fast song with blast beats and frantic soloing and a very groovy breakdown at the end that fades out to black, wrapping out this behemoth of an album. So there you have it, Altars of Madness by Morbid Angel. Go give it a listen and if you like what you hear, please go ahead and purchase it. I will definitely have to go buy a new copy of it, which sucks, but whatever. You know, it's a great album. I'll bite the bullet and get it again. My favorite songs from this album would have to be, well, Damnation, for sure, Immortal Rights, and Visions from the Dark Side. Yeah, those are awesome. And my least favorite song on this album is definitely track number seven, which is Bleed for the Devil, which I already told you. Anyway, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please drop me a like if you did. And tell me, which are your favorite songs from this album? Which is your least favorite song from this album? Don't forget to subscribe to this channel like a man if you haven't yet. And if you enjoy the content, please consider becoming a patron to the channel. A little goes a long way, and we surely do appreciate it. I will see you guys next time. Pat out, middle on, dudes.